Let's begin with the five-pronged pillars that you have also stated you will focus on, talking about knowledge, policy, infrastructure, and innovation. Walk us through uh, what you intend to achieve under these pillars. Oh, brilliant. Thank you for, for the opportunity to share. Um, I'd, I'd like to start by highlighting that the uh, strategic blueprint that we've put out actually took inspiration from the president's uh, uh, directive and, and agenda, the renewed up agenda uh, uh, for, for this government. And at the heart of that agenda is really the desire to help build a more prosperous Nigeria. That one is that is prosperous for all. I think that's something that uh, came out really strongly across board. That the agenda in itself and its desire for growth is based on inclusive growth. That we're not only growing as a nation, but we're growing in a way where we're carrying people along. And that's the inspiration uh, for what we've developed. So the strategic blueprint that, you've, that you're referring to or you've referred to uh, is, is building upon uh, the, 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 the renewed up agenda, but most importantly, the assets and growth and gains that we've made within the uh, information and communication technology sector in the country. As you rightly described, this is a sector that contributed over 18% to the GDP last year. Across Africa, when you look at funding to technology startups, uh, Nigeria is actually the top destination. Last year, about $5 billion was invested. Nigeria alone took almost 20% of that total out of all the 50-plus countries uh, in Africa. So what we've built as, as a strategic agenda, from talking to a lot of the stakeholders in the, in the, in the sector, from taking brief from all the agencies within the ministry and also looking at what's been done in the past is, is a strategic blueprint that is providing guidance for everyone that is involved in the sector on how we're going to come together to drive the inclusive growth that the president would like to see in the next four years. And at the heart of that, the foundation of our strategic blueprint is what we've called knowledge recognizing that you cannot develop any society or any sector without the precocide know-how that you need to do that. So we need a strong workforce uh, to be able to drive the growth we want to see in the sector. But not just locally only. Globally, this is a sector that is doing really well. But unfortunately for the sector, it's a sector that also requires significant amount of people to power its activities. But the Western country, as, as you may already know, is declining when it comes to population, but not only is it declining, the population is also aging as well. And this is where we have a unique opportunity as a continent, but also most importantly as, as, uh, as a country. On the continent, 40% of our 1.2 billion people are young people under the age of uh, 25. But when you bring that statistics to Nigeria, it's actually 60% of our over 220 million people are under the age of, of 25, which means we do have the ingredient that we need to be able to power innovation and technological development in Nigeria, but also globally as well. So as we put resources into building the workforce that is required to drive the innovation that we want to see, we also recognize the opportunity that we can become a net exporter of, of technology talent. Not only can we grow the talent and groom the talent that we need locally, we can also supply talent to the world. Then the second part of that um, strategic blueprint is actually focused on policy. Uh, you know, that now that we have a pro-business uh, uh, president and government, that we should be looking at the role of policy, not just from regulating and stifling innovation, but that we look at the role of policy as an opportunity to open up our economy for more innovators and technology entrepreneurs to actually do business and thrive. And the reason for this is not just because we only want to encourage businesses. Of course, if we encourage businesses, they're going to create jobs, add value to our GDP. But I think most importantly, technology entrepreneurs and innovators are the people that we need to help diversify our economy. Because when we apply technology significantly in the critical sectors of our economy, we can raise productivity. And by raising productivity in these different sectors, they can begin to contribute uh, tremendously uh, to our economy and also create job opportunities as well. So this is why we're imagining policy as a way of enabling innovators and entrepreneurs, which is the second pillar. The third pillar is actually something that we've called infrastructure. 
recognizing that you can't have a strong digital economy, you can't make the most of technology if you don't have the backbone, which is, which is infrastructure. And Nigeria is in a very unique place, unique in the sense that we're one of the few countries in Africa with almost seven, with seven, not almost, with seven submarine cables. So submarine cables are the cables that allow internet to come to different parts of the world. And we're one of the few countries on the continent with seven submarine cables. And we also have two more cables that is just landed as well, which is going to take that number to nine. So the precursor investment that is required to actually ensure that broadband connectivity is across the country is already there. We just need the last mile investment to allow investors to help us invest in ensuring that every part of the country is covered with fiber optic cable. And once we do this, the benefits of, of having fiber across the country is that the quality of connectivity is going to go up significantly, whether it's the calls that people make or the ability of people to connect to the internet. It's also going to become cheaper as well. And as it becomes cheaper, we find a situation where our people, regardless of where they are in the country, can actually be connected to the global economy, which is being powered by digital technologies today. And the fourth part of the pillar is something that we've called innovation, entrepreneurship, and capital. Recognizing that even if we do one, two, two, three, we still require the best of our best to be able to come up with smart ideas that can help us leverage all that investment that we've done in those first three pillars. We require the entrepreneurs amongst ourselves to be able to build businesses that can create jobs and leverage the infrastructure that we're investing in. And at the, at the, at the same time as well, they need capital. We, we need to ensure that people have access to, to, to opportunities to invest. If they have access to capital, they can then, of course, build businesses that can become sustainable, that can create uh, business or, uh, uh, job opportunities, but at the same time, add value to the, to, to, to the society as well. So this is the fourth pillar. And the way we're imagining that is making sure that policy can allow foreign investors to bring capital in, but also that government can actually, we can put our skin in the game and encourage local entrepreneurs to build. And by doing so, we want to increase the number of locally domiciled technology companies also in Nigeria because we've had great technology companies being built out of this, uh, this country. You know, Flutterwave is a fantastic example. Paystack is doing amazingly well as well. We've seen companies like IHS, you know, starting out of Nigeria but growing significantly to becoming one of the top five infrastructure companies, uh, technology infrastructure companies in the world, not just in Africa. And we've seen the growth of giants like MTN off the back of the fantastic business they've been doing in the country. Glow, you know, Airtel, a lot of the telecommunications companies. So we do know that our land is a fertile place for entrepreneurs. And we want to support that to ensure that we can see more people growing technology businesses in Nigeria.